For a while now, I've been really liking these artworks with those super large and detailed buildings in them. And I've always wanted to make one myself, but I was never patient enough to model that long and I didn't even know where to start when creating them. But recently I finally sat down and after doing some research got to work and came up with this. And today I'm going to break down the process of creating this artwork and share some things I learned in the process. So the first step was as always gathering a good amount of reference images. And I also tried to get a pretty clear idea of the model I wanted to create in my head. So when I had that I got to modeling. But as I said before, I didn't even really know where to start when creating such big buildings. So what I found worked best for me was starting with one sector of the building, which I pretty much copied from one of my reference images, and then adding sector after sector until you have a full building. And I absolutely didn't care if my building was physically accurate or if it would instantly collapse if it was real. I only cared about how it looks. As you can see, I only used cubes and other very rough shapes at first, so that I wouldn't limit myself if I wanted to make bigger changes to the structure later on. I'd recommend you to not rush this part, but really take your time, because changing the base structure becomes exponentially harder the more detail you added. So when I was happy with mine, I finally started adding some details. I started with adding bars to pretty much all the edges, because I was going for a half-timbered medieval style, but I also worked with a lot of arches and curved bars, to give it a bit more of a majestic feeling I guess. At the beginning I used this small sector of the building to try out many different things until I settled on an architectural style for the whole thing. When I was happy with this part I moved on to the next one. And that was pretty much my workflow for the modeling. Working sector after sector instead of all over the place. I did that to keep the project organized and it also helped me to remember to make a backup after finishing one sector. Making backups in my opinion is super important, especially when working on bigger projects. That way you can easily go back to an old save if you are unhappy with what you did. At first I did that with collections in my file, but then I realized that this slows the project down a lot, so then I went over to duplicating the whole Blender file. So I kept creating sector after sector. But I didn't yet make the windows and doors, but only put cylinders and arches where they would later be supposed to be, as placeholders. I did that because I would later cut them out with a boolean operation, but I didn't yet want to deal with the modifiers, or if I would have applied them it would have messed up my topology, which would have made it a lot harder to change the base structure later if I wanted to. So as you can see here, I pretty much stuck with one style, but I also made some slight changes for every sector, just to add some variation and make the whole thing feel more alive. I also added four different balconies, all in different styles, some more rugged and cheaper and the other ones more luxurious. For the roof, I first created one roof slate and duplicated it with the array modifier to create one row of slates. Then I duplicated this row and slightly moved it to one side to add some variation. And because it would look weird if the rows didn't align at the end, I put wooden bars at all of the ends to cover it up. After I placed them all, I joined them and in the edit mode I selected random vertices and slightly moved them up. This just makes it feel a lot older and more random. For the towers, I didn't know how to place the slates in the most efficient way, so I ended up placing them all by hand, which took a while, but I made heavy use of the mirror modifier for that, but not just for the roof, but also for all the bars of the building, of course. When this was finally done, I moved on to the windows and doors, cutting them out with the boot tool add-on, and then adding different wood frames or doors to all of them. After that, the modeling was almost done, so I went over the whole model one last time, adding details like window stills or little roofs above the windows, and then went over to unwrapping. I first tried unwrapping the whole model with the smart UV project, but with more complex models, I rarely get results that I'm completely happy with, so I didn't do that, but instead marked seams on all the sharp edges, and then unwrap it normally, which gave me a way cleaner result actually, but I still had to do some cleaning up. Then the texturing happened in Substance Painter, where I first had to bake the model and then started texturing partly using materials from old projects and partly making new ones. The texturing process wasn't too interesting and was mainly made up of clicking bars to add a wood material and then adding generators to add effects like curvature to add highlights to the edges or ambient occlusion to make ridges darker. One problem that I faced when texturing this model was that you can only work with textures up to 4K in Substance Painter, which can be too little if you're working on large models. But if you want, you can export it in 8K, but because 8K textures will slow down your file a lot, I stuck with the 4K textures because I knew that in my render the building would be relatively far away from the camera, so you wouldn't be able to see a lot of details in the texture anyway. 
So then, back in Blender, I made a quick little scene using mainly old plant assets and making them orange and yellow to give it this nice comfy autumn feeling, I guess. If you're interested in how to make those plant assets, I am gonna link the video down in the description below. Then in the background I added some mountains with the landscape add-on and in the front I placed some bushes and trees which I finally animated using a noise modifier in the graph editor to make them move in the wind and then I added a slight camera movement and rendered the whole thing out for 120 frames. Thank you so much for watching this video all the way to the end. I hope you could learn a thing or two and we'll see each other again pretty soon.